Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making a low poly anime character. So this is the first part in a series of videos. It's aimed at beginners, but not complete beginners. So do check out my beginner courses, links in the description. Also, if you want a more high poly detailed character creation course, then I have a great course with hours worth of content, taking you through a sculpting workflow, right from starting out, blocking out, sculpting, retopology, UV unwrapping, texture painting, details about rigging and animation and putting it into a game engine. So if you like the sound of that, then check out the link in the description. For the best beginner base course, I recommend CG Boost, extremely detailed and comprehensive. And if you want courses on game development, then try the links to gamedev.tv. They've got great courses and a great ethos where they try and make sure that you never get stuck. So they've got loads of support. And those are the guys I've teamed up with for my character course. So do check out the links in the description and the playlists on my channel for other free courses. So here we are in the basic scene and I've got the shortcut keys down the corner here to help you. The first thing I want to do is bring my reference image in and the link to the reference image if you want to follow along is in the description. So here's my reference image. I'll click and drag that into Blender and I'll close down my file browser. And you'll notice it comes in perpendicular to where my viewport was, so flat against my viewport. We can reset its position very easily with Alt-R, which removes any rotation, and Alt-G, which removes any grabbing or movement. Now I can press RX90, so RX90, to rotate in the x-axis 90 degrees, and press Enter. Now that's come in as an empty, which you can see up on the right-hand side here. And I can easily hide that or make it visible with the visibility button in the outliner. So first of all, let's line it up to our grid. So I'll press one on my numpad, or you can use the Cartesian coordinates up here if you haven't got a numpad, and I need to move this into position. But my cube's in the way, and I'm not going to use my cube, so I'll left click on the cube and delete. I'll left click on my empty, or my character reference, and roughly put that into position, and zoom in a bit more. And we need to position it so it's roughly along the x-axis. I can press G to grab to move, but I can also hold down shift to move in smaller increments. And I can get the bottom of the boot to line up roughly with the red line. Also, I want to try and go into the middle. So I've got my 3D cursor at the middle. If for any reason you haven't got your 3D cursor at the middle, press shift C. It zooms you out and it puts the 3D cursor right in the center of the grid. So I can now press one to go back into front view and zoom in again. G to grab and hold down shift to move it into the center. We can be a bit rough at the moment and line it up more later on. I'll press my middle mouse button to come out of front view and with my reference selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate and R, Z, 90 to rotate it around the Z axis 90 degrees. Now I'll press G and then Y to constrain that movement to the Y axis and move that across so it's roughly in the middle. Then I go to three on my numpad to go to side view and G then Y just to move it into the middle of the boots, and so it's in the center of the character. So now we have a front and a side view set up, but they're not really in a very useful position for modeling. What I like to do is grab the one with side view as the focus, and press G then X, and move it backwards so I can model in the front here, and the front view, G then Y to move it backwards. That way I can easily model in this area here, and have the images in the background. I'll move this one across a little bit further, so G then X, so it doesn't overlap the hand. So now we're ready to start modeling, and I find it's easiest to start off with somewhere like the legs, and build downwards and upwards, and finish up with the head, and I'll explain why as we go through. I'll press Shift A to add an object, you can also go to the Add menu up here, so Shift A to add mesh and cylinder, and it's rare for me to start with a cylinder, but it does make sense for arms and legs but I'm going to change the parameters of the cylinder down the bottom left here. I'll click on that disclosure arrow and I'll change the vertices to six and press enter. So that's changed our cylinder so it's a six-sided cylinder. I'm going to change the cap fill type to none or nothing and that will get rid of the ends. You can resize it in here as well, but there's no need, I'll do it by hand. So I can minimize this, come to front view and start scaling it down and move it into position around the thigh. So S to scale and G to grab, and zoom in with my wheel. Now I'll start lining it up shortly, but what I want to do first is mirror this across to the other side as we've got a symmetrical character. So with that object selected, come down to the modifier properties here, 
add modifier and mirror modifier. Now you'll notice that hasn't done anything and the mirror modifier can be quite confusing at times. But the important thing to understand is that your center point, this orange point here, is where the mirror is taken from. So if I go to front view again and zoom out just a touch, my 3D cursor is right at the center of my character. That's actually where I want the center point of my object to be right in the middle. So it will mirror across the other side nice and easily. So making sure that your 3D cursor is at the center. Another way of doing that is Shift S and cursor to world origin. So my 3D cursor is in the center, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now the origin has moved down to the 3D cursor of this object and you can see the mirror across to the other side in the X axis going across here. If we look at the mirror panel, you can see that the X axis is ticked, hence why it's mirroring to the other side. And if I untick that and tick it, you can see the mirror. The other thing you'll want to turn on is clipping, just down here. And that means when I move my object together, it will stick together. So now I need to go into edit mode with tab so I can start editing my shape. Now, if this is sounding a bit too complicated and going too fast, make sure you've checked out my beginner courses where I talk about this sort of thing in much more detail. Also, I want to be in X-ray mode at the top here. I can press Alt Z for short so I can see the background vertices. Now I can select all the top ones by box selecting like this and scaling down, G to grab and rotate them into position. The bottom ones as well, scale them down and G to grab and again, move them into position. And I'll zoom in a bit more, select the top ones again, E to extrude, so I'm pulling out a new set of vertices and move those into position. Now we've got a bit of a kink in the leg there, so I'll have to just reposition those and try and reposition them as you go along rather than all at the end because it gets quite complicated to do that. So select the top ones again, E to extrude and move them up to the groin. Now figuring out how many times to extrude and how many polygons you need can be quite confusing. Wherever you're gonna get a change of direction in the mesh, you'll certainly need polygons. So around the groin, the hips, the knees, especially if you're thinking about animating later. On low poly work, generally large areas like this between the shapes can be okay. It depends how far you want to follow the natural curves of the form that you're either tracing around or creating. The thighs do go in really slightly around here, so I could press Control R and do another loop cut around there and bring these vertices in slightly. And then we've got a natural curve going that way. But again, it depends on how high poly you want to go. I'll select the bottom ones, E to extrude and come down to the knee and scale it in. And now a difficult part does come when we come to the trunk area. If you think about how your leg bends, it will bend upwards this way. But if we think about the back of the character, we won't want to go up that way as well. It doesn't actually bend at the top here, it sort of bends around here. So in some ways it's better to have slightly different topology at the back than the front. For this though, I'm going to try and keep it simple so it's nice and easy for you to recreate. And there'll be a few triangles in there just for the sake of easy modeling. And triangles are absolutely fine, especially on low poly work. The reason we try and avoid triangles is to make the modeling process easier because all of it gets converted to triangles in the end. I'm going to go to edge mode with two on my keyboard. So I'll be up in edge mode here Select that edge, E to extrude, and pull it inwards in the X. You can constrain to the X axis by clicking X and meet in the middle. Now if I press grab, they are stuck together, and that's what the clipping is. Now I can select this outside edge loop, and I can press Alt, Shift, left click to go all the way around that edge loop, and E to extrude upwards. I'll come to front view first, and then E to extrude upwards. And I want to keep those middle vertices apart so I don't want them sticking together. So if I go back to one to vertex mode, box select these ones and pull those in after I've pulled these ones upwards. I'll select them all again and E to extrude up to the top. So again, about there and then pull these in afterwards. So now we've got a slightly awkward shape as you can see, and it might be easy to see this without X-ray mode on. So I'm going to need to pull these ones out, G then Y, and these ones out. G then Y. Now let's have a good look around our model and see how it's looking and it's not looking great at the back. Also it's very difficult to see the back because my reference image gets in the way. So back into object mode I'm going to select the back reference image and the side reference image with shift M to move to a new collection and type in reference and press OK. Now they're in a reference collection I can hide the whole collection and easily see my model. 
Okay, so I'll select on my object and go back into edit mode and see if I can change this around. Now I want to move these backwards, but that just creates a fairly odd shape there. What I actually need is an extra line going across here. So there's a slight crease in the character's bum and I've got slightly more polygons to work with and it will help for animating. So if I press K to go into the knife tool, this will be really useful for a lot of the model. You can see how it highlights when I hit an edge and that's really where it wants to produce new vertices and it highlights red when I snap to a vertex. And it's always a good idea where you can to join up and cut from a vertex. So if I go to the top vertex up here, left click to create a cut and then left click on the edge there, there, and then back up to the top here. Again, it highlights red, left click and then press enter. I've created a cut around there. I can then start adapting my shape a little bit more to resemble more of a bum. So I'll go three to side view, bring back my reference images and start moving these into position. So G then Y, generally keeping to the Y axis, just make sure that you've selected both vertices in the front and back. So you might want X-ray mode on so you can see them easily. Try and stick to side view as that will help you and you won't be pulling them in the X axis which we've already sorted from the front angle. Okay, so I'll hide my reference and see how I'm getting on. Back out of X-ray mode, and that's not looking too bad. Now the problem we have at the front, if the leg bends, we're going to get distortion across here, because the leg should bend across here slightly. Again, I'm going to put in some triangles, so K for the knife tool, and cut down across here. So we've got a sort of natural bend for the leg. Then I can start to bring these areas out, in line with the reference image. So back into edit mode, back into side view, x-ray mode with my reference images and start moving those into position. I can grab and rotate if I've got several vertices selected and just generally tidy up a bit, lining up your verts to your reference image. And the trunk area is looking fine from the front. So I'll hide the references and just go around to the back and tidy up a bit into edit mode. And I'll just even out these vertices. So GG to grab and slide, GG, to edge slide. So it's slide across an edge, GG, a useful command once again. And the character's looking good, we'd probably just want to slide a few of these across, so GG, to make the bum a little bit wider. And that's looking fine. Okay, so that concludes this episode. So try and get up to this point, save your work and try and go a step further. That way you'll improve if you try and do these things on your own. And then if you get stuck, you'll be able to see me complete it next time. And you'll know which bits are a bit more of a struggle and which bits aren't. So thanks for watching, and I hope that helps.